Six years of work, the hopes of 12,000 athletes from 123 countries, a $650 million spectacle. It all stopped today in Munich. The Olympic Games in suspension. The spotlight taken instead by a gang of Arab fanatics and their Israeli hostages. The full story in a moment. Direct from our newsroom in New York, this is the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite and Eric Severide in Washington, John Sheehan in Munich, Ed Rabel in Jerusalem, Richard C. Hotlett in New York, Roger Mudd on Capitol Hill, Daniel Shore in Washington, and Tony Sargent in Washington. Good evening. All day long, German police and millions of others around the world watched the waiting game in Munich's Olympic Village. Inside the Israeli quarters there, a gang of Arab terrorists and their Israeli hostages. Two Israelis were killed early in the day as the terrorists broke in on them. Eight others were held hostage as officials negotiated the terrorist demands. Freedom for 200 other terrorists jailed in Israel. Safe passage for the Arabs to an Arab country. And then late this afternoon, nighttime in Munich, three helicopters took the terrorists and their hostages to a military airport outside Munich. There, shooting has broken out. No report yet on casualties. But correspondent John Sheehan reports the shooting lasted for six to eight minutes. Sheehan earlier recorded this report on the day as it unfolded. The Olympic peace has been broken. Terrorism and death in the Olympic village. Palestinian guerrillas attacked and captured the quarters of the Israeli team. The Olympic village is a complex of buildings constructed especially for the summer games. Each nation's athletes have their own quarters. The Israelis are housed here in a row of five houses. It's here, house number one, where the Palestinian terrorists rushed in this morning. Throughout the day, the terrorists have been threatening to kill their hostages. When they burst into Israeli house number one, weightlifting coach Moshe Weinberg fought them off until he was killed. His heroism delayed the attackers long enough for more than half the team members in the house to escape. From early this morning, the Palestinians have demanded the release of 200 Arabs jailed in Israel and have demanded three airplanes at Munich Airport. They said the first plane would carry two of them and some of the hostages. Only when that plane had landed safely in some Arab capital would the second group leave the Olympic village. They set a deadline, then negotiated with German police and extended the deadline. High German officials arrived by helicopter. There were more negotiations. Thousands of police moved in and surrounded the village. More thousands of spectators gathered and held a vigil. While the life and death drama went on, so did the Olympic Games. After some vacillation, the International Olympic Committee decided to suspend the Olympics until tomorrow afternoon. Chancellor Willy Brandt went on nationwide television to say that everything had been done to free the hostages, including an offer to the terrorists of an unlimited amount of money. He also said German politicians had offered themselves as substitute hostages, but the Palestinians had refused. Meanwhile, Munich airport has been sealed off by police. Night has fallen and the terrorists are threatening to kill hostages as a warning if the German and Israeli governments do not meet their demands. German officials have imposed a news blackout because the Palestinians are known to have radios and TV sets in the Israeli quarters. In the latest negotiations, the terrorists said they had heard Israeli Defense Minister Moshe Dayan was arriving here. They said if he tries to negotiate with them, they will murder all the hostages immediately. Police will not confirm whether Dayan is here. In one curious footnote, it was reported here today that West German intelligence received a report yesterday that Palestinian terrorists might try to invade the Olympic village. Controls were tightened at all the gates, but nothing was done to prevent the terrorists from climbing over a six-foot wire fence. John Sheehan, CBS News, Munich. The latest report on the shooting at the Munich airport is that all of the Israeli hostages have been freed, according to Reuters. Another report says that an ambulance driver there says all the terrorists have either been killed or wounded. However, another report says some of them are still at large. Correspondent Shayam also reports that back inside the Israeli complex, three badly wounded Palestinians were found. They were stabbed, indicating that the Israelis had managed to put up a, a fight. 
Police tightened security today for Jewish athletes. Olympic swimmer Mark Spitz, a Jew, and the winner of seven gold medals, was put under a specially tight protective guard early in the day, and then later on was put on a plane back to the United States with a stopover in London tonight. The entire Egyptian team also flew home during the day. A spokesman said they were afraid of retaliation. One of those hostages in Munich was an American, 28-year-old David Berger, who holds dual U.S.-Israeli citizenship. Berger has lived in Israel for three years and was in Munich as a light heavyweight wrestler. His father is a doctor in the Cleveland suburb of Shaker Heights, and today Peter Carey of Cleveland's WJW-TV spoke with him. What is your feeling now that you know that uh, the second man killed was not your son? I understand that uh, your son did know him? Well, you know, I suppose the feeling of relief and sorrow at the same time. I mean, you can't, uh, you can't help but feel extremely sorry for the young man that was killed and extremely relieved that it wasn't your own. It's an ambivalent feeling that you have on that sort of thing. They were quite close. Yes, very close. You've been glued to a television set now most of the day trying to get some information on that. Have you gotten any help from any of our governments or any of the agencies? No. All the specific information that I've had have all come over the TV media. 